it might not be a super long day out. I'll probably end up going back because it's raining. <laughs> Might not have been a great time to come, but it's also off season, so. Probably shame on me for not doing a lot of research, but hey, lost in Brussels. I'm not lost, That's I had it. math. Thank you. It's good. It's fake coffee, but it's fake coffee, but it's easier to travel with. <laughs> So we just made it downtown to like the Brussels Palace. It's quite rainy today. It might not be a super long day out. It's supposed to stop this afternoon, but it's like raining, raining. So we're kind of under a tree here. I think we're gonna walk around, see the palace, maybe look at a few churches, some of the buildings here. We'll probably end up going back because it's raining. <laughs> It's so wet. It really is. Do you want to find that cafe? That's what I'm talking about. Uh, this museum is really interesting. Um, I kind of picked it just because it had a general overview of uh, Brussels, the history behind Brussels. It's been completely enlightening. I, one thing that I didn't know before I got Belgium, like I, I didn't understand that there was still a king. It's a constitutional monarch here, um, and I didn't realize that the previous king is actually still alive, but he abdicated his throne and gave it to his son early, basically because he decided that he was ready to uh, give up his position of power, um, and he knew that his son was ready. So it's the current king's daughter is going to be the first reigning queen of Belgium because a recent law changed in 1991 has both male and female children of the monarch are eligible for the crown. So um, it'll be interesting to see. That's probably something that will happen in our lifetime where Belgium will have the first reigning queen. Walking in the park, it finally stopped raining. The museum was a good idea to get out of the rain. This park is kind of like under construction. Yeah, it was, yeah. Might not have been a great time to come, but it's also off season, so that's probably why. So one of the more interesting facts is like the most recent incarnation of Belgian is actually younger than the United States. There's very few things in Europe that are actually younger than the United States. So it's, it's quite interesting to kind of like come to a country that is technically younger than the United States 
at least by the constitutional standards. There's a lot of interesting facts that we kind of heard in that museum. I, I, would, I would highly recommend it to anybody that's coming to Brussels. It was quite interesting and, and I would highly recommend it. It wasn't too expensive to get in. Belgium was, is a very interesting country because right now it's considered the capital of EU. Additionally, it's also the head of NATO, you know, because there's this whole war in Ukraine over, over NATO. So a lot going on here in Brussels. It's also one of the few places in Belgium that actually has both languages. It's actually considered bilingual here. They speak both Flemish, which is Dutch, and French, which are the two primary languages of the government here. You know, basically the country's now been split in two, where the northern half speaks Flemish and the southern half speaks French. Um, Brussels is one of the few places that speaks both, it's, it's bilingual, Flemish, and uh, French. Problem with the navigation? Yes. Okay. Lost in Brussels. I'm not lost. That's I have it. maps. The title. No, the title's gonna be Ben doesn't like my navigation. I'm excited about this one. Yeah. Sweet potato fries and regular fries and then some chicken nuggets and then I got a truffle aioli I believe and then got a chef's ketchup which is made with uh, beetroot? Beetroot sugar, yeah. Beetroot sugar, so. So if you actually didn't know, um, Brussels and Belgium are actually known for French fries. Closer to Belgium fries than they are French fries. but. They're really good and they're quite popular here. Um, potatoes were basically a staple of the economy in Belgium. And so that's why, you know, actually earlier in the museum, we saw that um, potatoes actually made up like a majority of what people in Belgium ate on a daily basis in the 1800s. So, um, you know, with the advent of transport and, you know, more modernization, obviously extra foods came in, but that's what they're known for. They are known for French fries or Belgium fries. I really don't know what to call them, but they're one of those. You like it? It's not bad. So the chicken tenders here were served with applesauce, which I've never had before. As as a like, I've had applesauce before. I've never had it like with chicken tenders. It, it's not bad. It, it makes the chicken a little bit lighter. It's very interesting. If anyone's curious as to why there is a statue of a peeing boy here, basically the story goes that a boy peed on a fire, basically prevented most of the city from catching on fire, or at least some expensive buildings. So that's kind of the, the reason why they have a statue. At least that's what they say. I think that we're gonna head back to the flat. You know, we've been out a lot today and we've done a lot. 
But I think we have some work to do. Um, I actually need to do some bookings for um, some of the day trips that we're planning on taking here. We're looking at Bruges and Ghent. I think those are the two cities. They're also known as like fairy tale cities because they have a lot of old architecture in them. But we're gonna try to go there in the upcoming days. But I just kinda gotta see how we can get there, the easiest way, most affordable way. All right, so we'll see you when we get back to the apartment. It's the coffee. It's hot. I don't know why it's so hot. Ow. Why do you hand me things like that? <laughs> I've been letting it cool down for like 15 oh. minutes. It hurt. I don't know why it's hot. This hood is way too big for me. Is this back to find 